James, first of all, uh, an update on Lawrence Maguire. How's he getting on? Uh, struggling, um, but um, we're hoping he gets through the training session today. Um, but obviously, there was a chance he could have a setback and be out for for Tuesday. But um, yeah, he's he's rolled his ankle, so it depends how it calms down after the session today, um, and then we'll see and, and analyse tomorrow. I imagine it's one of those that you, you really don't want to risk if there's there's any chance of aggravating it. Oh, well, so, uh, yeah, I, th I think I've mentioned that in the last few weeks that we've got a squad capable of players coming in and out. Um, so we don't want to take any risks for any obviously long-term injuries that we can control. Any further info on, on Jack Clark's injury and the, the length of absence that he might be out? Yeah, he, he'll be out till mid-November. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty bad one. It wasn't a full rupture of the hamstring, but it was pretty close. Um, so I guess we're thankful that it wasn't a complete rupture. It's a strange one, really, and you know, it's not obviously in the latter stages of the game. Um, he wasn't overloaded either because he obviously was on the bench on the Monday, like I, I think I mentioned on, on Friday. So it was a disappointing one, but it happens, and that's why you have a squad. Um, that's why you try and build uh, the best players possible in your squad that can come in and, and you can rotate um, if the, the fixtures are piling up or indeed you get injuries. So um, it's an unfortunate one for Jack, but he's in safe hands. And what we've got to make sure is he comes back sharp in November. You mentioned the squad a couple of times there, James. Um, are you going to look to rotate anyway, even without Knox, and just to make sure that players get different different minutes and everyone's getting as much game time as possible? It, it's not it's not necessarily about people getting game time. Um, yes, in pre-season that would be the case, Adam. But it's more to do with okay, how do we win the game? And um, in terms of our squad, we've got players that have got different type of experiences, different type of weapons, and we'll choose a team to win a game. Um, and obviously the physical aspects come into that, um, as well as technical, tactical and psychological. So it just depends what the staff and I think is best to go for each game. We clearly got that wrong on Saturday, but you can dwell on the little percentages like that. I tell you what, we've got it right more times than we've got it wrong since I've been here. So um, we can't dwell. We've got to move forwards. Um, tomorrow is a, another challenge, and the results have shown you that there's no easy game at this level. My experiences in the last five years at this level tell you that Barnet will bring their own challenges. They've got players that have played at this level for quite a period of time. They've got an EFL manager in the past, so they've got experience um, running through the squad. So. Um, we know what's going to come, and uh, let's hope we get the, the the team right tomorrow. Is the Dover game an example of the, the high standards that you've set essentially so far? In terms of um, an improvement on perhaps where we were when I came in, perhaps we would have lost that game in the past. So the positives are that we never looked in danger of conceding. Um, however, we were dreadful with the ball, um, which was a shock because we were so good with the ball against Bromley. Um, but we know the, the environments we're going to go into are going to be uh, variable. So we know teams are not going to cut the grass so it was long. We know they're not going to water the pitch at all and it was dry. However, they're just um, variables that you have to overcome if you want to do anything in this league. And uh, we didn't vary our game as such to cope with the environment. And when you don't start right like we didn't, um, you can't just turn it on and off like a tap. That doesn't work in elite sport. So there's, there's learning there um, without getting too carried away that we're unbeaten in five and we're third in the league. So um, let's concentrate on the positives. Uh, it's been a good start. Um, if we can win tomorrow, it'll be a fantastic start after the first six. As a manager and a coach, do you, do you have to accept that every now and again you're not going to be at your best and that you might have to try and find different ways of doing things and different ways to win games and, and show bits of character to, to get you through when, when you're not necessarily at your top level. Yeah, and to be fair to the group, it, the, the most important thing that came out of the half-time team talk was we don't concede. So at worst, we come away with a draw, which we did, and we did it comfortably, I, thought, I, I felt, on the day because they didn't create anything. And in that second half, really, on another day, Liam should score two um, and we should be getting on the end of the, the Kelvin's cross I don't remember the opposition causing any problems like that to us. So, um, yes, it was a dour performance. Um, we didn't get as much free-flowing football as what we used to because um, some of that's been outstanding this season. Um, but we'll take our medicine. We didn't, uh, we didn't get to the heights of performance we wanted to. 
However, we didn't concede and we come away with a point and uh, it makes it a good point if we can win tomorrow. Still four points from the two games. Four clean sheets now in five games, only two goals conceded. Often, often quoted that, that strikers win games and defences win championships. I mean, if you can keep, keep up that kind of record in defence, it'll give you a really good chance this season, won't it? Yeah, and we've also scored uh, enough goals as well in the five games. So, look, it's... Um, is that there's a hell of a lot of positives. I know the group will react really well in training today. I have no doubts that there's going to be a reaction tomorrow evening. Um, I'm really looking forward to being under the lights for the first time this season. It's going to be class here with the supporters. We're really looking forward to continuing that great relationship with the support base that we've got. And um, we're so thankful for the 200 odd supporters that came down. Uh, really grateful. Um, we never take that support for granted. Um, and we move forward quickly tomorrow evening. How important is it to, to keep the unbeaten run going for uh, as long as possible and just keep that momentum going? Yeah, of course, long may it continue our, our form. We want it to continue as long as possible. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're unbeaten for a sustained period of time in the season, then you're going to go close, aren't you? You talked at the weekend about learning to respect the opponent from the start. I suppose another example of that is Barney tomorrow, and, uh, where they've been over the last year and the, the troubles and struggles that they've had. Yeah, but we we also want to be realistic, Adam. Like our teams are not just going to roll over. They've got their own game plan. They're going to have spells in the game. We're not just going to roll teams over and do everything that we want to do in every performance and, and win comfortably. It's not going to happen. Uh, that's just unrealistic. If you just look at the results across the league uh, in the last five games, tells you that it's um, some teams perhaps haven't started as well as they wanted to. We were in a good position, 11 points from five. Um, I'm delighted with that start. And if we can go with two points a game per average over the season, then you, you know you're going to go close. What do you make of Barnett then and the, the, the task that you'll face? Clearly not the start they'd have wanted, a couple of points uh, from five after a difficult year last year. Yeah, um, obviously an ex-league club as well. Um, their performances over the last 12 months haven't been up to scratch of where I'm sure they want them to be. It's been quite a bit of change there, but they've had good passages in, in, in the games and perhaps the two points they've got don't reflect where they are. They had a really good performance at Grimsby that I've seen that if they wouldn't have been perhaps gone down to 10 men when they were 3-1 in the ascendancy, they wouldn't have lost that game. Um, so, look, we know what, the, what they're going to bring. Um, we know where we can hurt them as well. Um, but first and foremost, we need to make sure we get back to our DNA, and that's high pressure on turnover, counter pressure, and moving the ball quickly and finding variations to get through off the back line. So we haven't done that in the last game, but we've done it very well in the four games previous. So um, it's looking good for tomorrow. Is that the reaction that you want to see then? Are those the, the sort of key aspects from the weekend that you want your team to, to display in front of your home fans? Yeah, that was the most disappointing thing from the away performance. Um, but you're going to get disappointments. So, yeah, of course, we, we want to get the crowd on side. We've started really explosively in other games at home. Um, and that's something we want to take forward going into the season that we want the um, going forward in the season that we want the crowd on side. I'm sure they will be. They've been fantastic. Um, even when the performance levels weren't there on Saturday, the, the crowd clapped us off. It's good togetherness going forward. And I think they realise, there's a realisation that, hey, it's been a good start to the season and um, it's not get carried away, not too high or not too low. We need to flat line and have some consistency in our behaviours. Um, and we'll see where we are after the next 39 games. Harry Kiel's had a, a, an excellent playing career. Clearly, he's, he started his managerial career with a, a few tough assignments. Does he deserve credit for, for, for taking on the, the roles that he's done and, and learning his trade in? in essentially the League Two and the National League? Yes, um, he, he's had some different projects uh, from Notts County through to Oldham. Obviously, he's had some different challenges. This is a challenge as well to obviously turn around Barnett's fortunes. Um, I think they were, I played them quite early in my tenure and they're in a similar situation to us. So it can be done. You can turn around environments like this. Um, it's a good challenge for him. Um, but at the same time, I'm fully focused on what I'm doing here. I don't really like to comment on other managers and their pathways. Um, but no, it'll be good to go against him tomorrow. And um, other than tomorrow night, I wish him all the best in, uh, in his tenure at Barnet. A repeat of your 6 0 the last time you met them at home would be quite nice. I imagine that seems like a world away now, last December. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. Uh, great performance, wasn't it? Um, a hat trick for Aquasi. 
uh, if we can do the same for Sh Shimango or Roe or Payne tomorrow, then uh, I'll be a, a, a happy man. Thanks, James. Good Thank luck. you. Cheers. Morning, James. Morning. Um, well, 11 points from 15 is not a bad return, is it, for uh, this point in the season? I'd say it's better than not bad. It's, it's probably good. Um, but we can always get better. And uh, 15 out of 15 would have been better. Uh, of course. Uh, you always say um, you don't look at the table or assess anything for the first 10 games. Is there, is there any logic to any reasoning for that? Why, why do you pick 10 games? Well, I think it gives a chance for the fixtures to level out in terms of you have a variety of opponents then. Um, and it's a good group of games there and you come over the first two months of the season after that 10 game period so I think that's a good leveller OK, where are you at? What did we do well as a, in those 10 games? What can we improve as a group? Um, and what are the objectives for the next little group of games? Um, Dion Dudlin has been appointed an ambassador for the Fair Game Project have you heard anything about that? Or have you any views about that? Um, it's, it's always positive. Um, we obviously want a fair game going forward in terms of equality all rounds. Football's for everybody. Um, I think that obviously with Dion's experience, experience in the media, but also as a player, um, it's a good appointment. Um, in terms of injuries, we've already heard um, about Maguire and Clark. Are there any other knocks on Eagles? Yeah, we, we had a, a sickness bug through the group last week that we kept on the down low and there's been a few problems over the weekend as well. So we just need to regroup this morning in training and see where we're at. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's obviously things that go under the radar that's not in the public domain um, and sometimes team selection is forced upon you. So um, yeah, we've got a few issues going on, but... Um, we've got the squad to handle it and whoever puts the team, the, the, the shirt on tomorrow for the team needs to get back to what we're good at and I have no doubts we will. Well, uh, Barnet uh, tomorrow and that's uh, another potential banana skin, I suppose. What can we expect from there? Well, I, I think that um, it's clear that most teams, whether they come here or they're facing us on their home patch, are playing with a bit of a freedom. They want to have a right go in these early stages. It's not just against us. I watched the, the Kings Lynn Dagenham game and I thought Kings Lynn in the first half were a credit to the, to the league. They really had a right go, uh, played really good attacking, fast tempo football against the league leaders at the time. So um, it shows that um, there's no easy game at this level. You know that Barnet are going to come here and have a right go. They're going to look at the environment, especially with the supporters here as well. It's a great place to play your football at the technique. So. We need to deal with that this year, but we will. We're, we're fine and we like the expectation on our shoulders. If you don't have expectation and you can't thrive in that, then you're in the wrong environment here and um, we won't succeed. But I'm confident the group that we've got and assembled here and we've added to in the summer, um, we're going in the right direction and our points per, per game in the five reflect that at the moment. And of course, they want to wipe out the memory of the 6-0 last season, won't they? Yeah, of course. They, they're gonna, but it's a new group for them as well. They've changed a hell of a lot. The management team's changed and the players. So I'm sure it's not in too many of their memories. Maybe a few, a sprinkle of the players. But um, of course, they're going to want to put that right. The, the players that were here last year.